Shalom and good afternoon. I want to welcome the JFNA delegates who are here with us today, participating in the General Assembly. Welcome to Beta Vichai. Just a word about where we are. Beta Vichai is a cultural hub for Jewish thought, content, and inspiration, dedicated to creating original and vibrant content and experiences around the Jewish Israeli calendar. That is exactly how the project, A Face, A Memory, A Day, which we will soon introduce, was born. I am Adas Wolf Yitzchak. I direct English educational programs here. And I'm honored to be sitting here next to Miriam Arel, the mother of Yuval, who this event is dedicated to his memory. Last night, and again just an hour and a half ago, we stood silent together as the sound of the siren punctured the air. As of last evening, you must have noticed the change in atmosphere as the, streets, as the streets gradually became quiet, the sound of music on the radio mellows, and makes space for the sounds of silence and awe, until finally an entire country stands still, seeking to remember those who have lost their lives and to embrace those who carry the pain of that loss throughout, throughout the whole entire year and every day. Silently, we acknowledge the heavy toll which was paid by many of life here in this special country, a price which sadly is paid until today. I want to take this moment to pray for the full recovery of the wounded in the past in the recent terror attacks yesterday and this morning, and to all the wounded and mentally and physically who walk amongst us carrying different injuries. And Yom HaZikaron, the intimate stories of loved ones transcend beyond the private and are inscribed in our collective memory. We try and make the public private and share the private with the public. But much too often, in that collective memory, only the big and grand stories are commemorated and represented. The small, simple moments and stories are often forgotten. Today especially, we must listen humbly to the stories and allocate space to commemorate and honor the big and small moments from their lives. With this understanding, a little over 10 years ago, Beta Vichai, with the leadership in, in this project of the Yotavat Fairez and Vail and Liran Lifshitz, embarked on a journey with the attempt to touch upon the impossible task of memory and its preservance, seeking to add a new dimension to the way in which we view memory, seeking to add a new language, if you may, this was the beginning of A Face, A Memory, A Day, a commemorative and artistic venture which tries to capture moments of life in the lives of the fallen soldiers and victims of terror and animate them. Ten years ago, the combination of animation and death was not trivial. But interestingly enough, in the Hebrew language, the word for animation, I'm wondering if anyone knows what it is, is hanfasha. Hanfasha is from the word nefesh, soul, which is literally to bring to life those lost moments. This was a quest to focus on who they were, how they lived, what and who they loved, rather than focus on the moment of their death. In this, in this special project, we get the glimpse of the fallen as children or teenagers we see the relationships with their loved ones, and nonetheless, we meet those who are left behind with the memories. We get to know their voice and hear their perspectives. This unique venture includes over 40 memories animated by well-known and aspiring artists, translated to many languages, and screened in ceremonies around the world. These had become a virtual pool of faces and the stories behind them. Such is the story of Yuval Arel. Every person has a name, said the poet Zelda, Lechol Ish Yeshem. In this case, two people with the same name, two separate life stories, one name. Yuval Arel, the oldest son of Miriam and Yechezkel, born in Chulon in 1962. His name is known to most Israelis because of the horrific coincidence that is related to his falling. Yuval, from the story of the two Yuvals. In 1982, during the first week of the First Lebanon War, two soldiers carrying the exact same name, Yuval Arel, living only a few streets away from each other in the Talpiot neighborhood in Jerusalem, were killed in Lebanon. 
יובל דה סן אב חיה בן יוסי, ויובל דה סן אב מרים בן יחזקאל. They did not know of each other since Miriam and Yechezkel had just moved to the neighborhood a couple months earlier. Due to a chaotic atmosphere of that first week of the war, the identical name was a source of much confusion, which led Miriam and Yechezkel to the fragile hope that a mistake had been made by the army and perhaps their Yuval was still alive, a hope that was shattered only a couple days later when the army officers knocked on their door again, not leaving room for doubt. This tragic coincidence was later captured in the song Brit Damim, Blood Alliance, a song which was canonized and had become part of the collective soundtrack of Yom HaZikaron. Miriam mentioned to me that this is the only name, right? which appears in Yom HaZikaron soundtrack carrying both a first and last name. The name Yuval Arel became known to us all, but what do we know about who they were? what they loved, what they were passionate about, even what they looked like, little to nothing. This is why we were so grateful to Miriam, who one day came to Beth Avichai with a request to tell us about her Yuval, who he was before he was a soldier, before he was known to all from this double tragedy, to tell us his story and his unique soundtrack of his life. I had the privilege to speak to Miriam on a few occasions, leading to this event. Miriam, you captivated my attention with your honesty and directness. And you had repeated one request, and I quote, on this day, better if we are quiet, better if we listen, rather than speak. Miriam, we're here to listen. Thank you. Shalom lachem. Welcome home. Well, here is Yuval, our son. I want to begin with Yuval's passion for reading. Yuval always had a book with him. His father, Yechezkel, taught him to read in a very early age. And from then on, Yuval never stopped reading. Books, as they do, carried him to different places and opened him up to new worlds, both near and far, that can only be reached by words, imagination, and excitement. Yuval loved the freedom and the intimacy of reading. Another one of Yuval's passions was music. Yuval first fell in love with music at the age of seven, after he attended a student concert. He then asked to learn to play the violin and played for 10 years. When Yuval stopped playing violin, he turned to rock music, especially heavy rock, taking an interest, studying it, and falling in love with it. The language of rock, the sounds, the beat, and the movement captivated him. And until this day, we have at home his wonderful and eclectic collection of records. Yuval spoke both languages, word and music, clearly and fluently, intelligently and with understanding, with excitement and love. In both, he felt completely at home. I want to describe what Yuval looked like as a teenager. He wore sneakers, jeans, usually ripped at the knee, a t-shirt with an interesting print, and long curly hair. He was the only one at his high school allowed to have long hair in spite the dress code. They just couldn't resist him. <laughs> Yuval was born on the eve of Yom Kippur. Everyone knows what the nature of this day is like within Israel. A festive hush 
gradually surrounds everything. And the holiness of the day, along with its solemn stillness, stillness, greeted him as he came into the world. It suits him to be born on such a day. Yuval was killed in the war. I was told by his friends from the army unit, from his army unit, that after he was killed and they retreated back with their tanks to their base, they felt an overwhelming and heavy silence all around. No one said an unnecessary word. In my mind, the soldier's silent on that day is forever linked with the stillness felt on the, on the day of his birth. Yuval is the firstborn of our children and the first of all the grandchildren, nephews and nieces in our extended family. In 1964, when Yuval was almost two years old, we went on Shlichut as Hebrew teachers to the Jewish Talmud Torah Day School in Calgary, Western Canada. Back then, it was just three of us, father and mother, Yechezkel and Miriam, and their little boy, Yuval far from our entire family in Israel. This was a time of intense togetherness, the three of us, just us together. Many years later, I wanted to tell about this unique experience because no one but the three of us experienced it. And soon there will be no one to tell. Now a few words about me and Yuval. One year I attended one of the memory day ceremonies at Beit Avichai, a face, a day, a memory. I watched, I listened, and I was deeply touched by the spirit of this project. I decided to meet with Liran and Yotvat, the founders of the project, to listen and to share. In them, I found a listening ear, a wonderful connection and common language. I told them about Yuval, mostly about his childhood. I wanted to highlight his life and not only talk about how he died. After all, he was born a child. He was not born a soldier. I wanted them to hear the everyday stories from his life, those that portray Yuval and us in the vibrant and colorful way it was. Today I would like to share with you one of those stories. While we were still on Shlichut in Canada, one Saturday night, Yuval and his father went out to buy something at a huge department store called Simpson Sears. The place was very crowded, and suddenly Yechezkel realized that Yuval was not next to him. In a panic, he ran up and down the escalator, searching everywhere, when suddenly, he heard a voice in Hebrew on the PA system. Abba, Zani Uvali. Zani Uvali, Abba. Abba, Ani Alachti Libud. Achshav Ani Belost and Found. And it's in English, Abba, it's me, Uval. Abba, I got lost. I am lost. I am at lost and found. Second later, second later, Yechezkel and Yuval was reunited. 
I thought to myself, Yuval was alone, only four years old. And even though he already knew English well, he understood that he needed a quick code in order to find his father immediately. And what could be better than using Hebrew? I was very, very proud of him. The animated film you are about to see is based, is based on this story about you, Valley. Thank you, Miriam, for allowing us to get that glimpse of Yuval's life. I want to invite Dov Avronson to join us here on stage, the creative director of the Guzma Animation Studio and the producer of this animated film created based on this memory. Shalom. Dov, thank you for joining us today. Momentarily, we will watch the film, but I would first like for you to please share a few words with us. What was it like to receive this task of animating this story? Well, I think um, Miriam, who said that we should talk as little as possible today, um, set up the film already very well. But I'll just say that the task that we were assigned was very, very sensitive and very, very um, delicate. Because, again, as Hadas both mentioned and, and Miriam, um, Yuval Harel is a name that is already in remembrance lore in Israel. And we, from our very first meeting with Miriam, my, my team and I realized that the Harel family and Miriam specifically, their feelings about this almost myth that grew around Yuval's death was something that they had very mixed feelings about, to say the least. And what we received on our table was a plea, uh, a request, but really just a plea to commemorate Yuval in a different way. And by hearing those small stories, the one that uh, Miriam just told so beautifully, uh, we realized that this, is, this story about the shopping mall in Calgary, um, through it we can say something uh, about mem remembrance and lost and found. And that's the scene, that's, the, that's what we'll see now. So we will now watch the film. Thank you. 
Dov and I shared uh, last week that we've watched this film countless times, and I don't think there is one time that I've watched this and was able to speak afterwards, so this is going to be challenging. Dov, can you please um, share with us some of the behind the scenes, some of those choices, artistic choices, thematic choices that were made when creating this film? Sure. Um, well, uh, first of all, animation gives us the tool. Animation is a very powerful tool, and it allows us to create a space that allows us to do things that we probably couldn't do in live action. The expressions, um, and Yechezkel's face, and the way that he's in sort of limbo in the time where he can't find Yuval is something that animation allows us to do. Um, and the music that we actually worked in subtly into the film, we did work in the music of the song that uh, we were actually looking to move away from. Um, so there were a lot of choices there um, that allowed us, that, anim that animation allowed us. Uh, we really wanted to tell a universal story. We wanted to tell a story that was particular, um, but speaking to Miriam, and again, that ethos that Yuval became a part of, to kind of, this is a, a, lot, this is a big word, but to kind of redeem the memory of Yuval from the national ethos to something a lot more private, uh, a lot more intimate. Um, so even, even the crowded mall isn't that crowded. The crowded mall is actually a very spacious place. People who see it for the first time and are not sure that it's even a mall, maybe it's some kind of uh, airport or some place where people are coming and going. Other things like the colors, uh, where there's a difference between the limbo stage and the more, re the more reality stage, uh, is something that we can allow ourselves in animation and illustration. The way that Yuval, we tell, Miriam told us many times that Yuval loved people and would, would talk to strangers and be, be friendly to strangers. So when he high fives that person on the escalator and he turns from a monochromatic color into colorful, that's Yuval doing his thing in the world. Um, and again, that, that's, what, that's what animation allowed us. I was very humbled by the entire process because I'm myself an, uh, I'm an immigrant and I wasn't familiar with the song, really. I mean, I sort of knew about it, but I didn't care that much about that part. Uh, to be honest, meeting Miriam and hearing these stories is what made it such an interesting and riveting challenge, both artistically and I would say as a human being. Um, and the fact that we were, at the end, able to show the, the losing, the finding, and then the losing again, which is an echo of that tragic mistaken identity story, but the mistaken identity story is not, is not the real story. The story is Yuval and how he interacted with his, with his father, with other human beings, and that was the great privilege in creating this film, was taking it out of a certain space and putting that story in a totally different space that gives it a very different context that hopefully um, was more what the Harel family and Miriam were looking for in the commemoration of Yuval. Toda. Can you share a bit about the reactions you received um, from this film? Were you surprised by any of them? I'm always surprised about reactions to, to, to artistic um, cre creation. Um, and a lot of parents uh, saw this as the ultimate anxiety of a parent losing a child, both momentar momentarily losing the child in uh, the mall and the larger losing uh, a child. I myself have a daughter in the army now, uh, and I just realized how watching this with a daughter in the army makes it a different experience for me. Um, so I think people relate to it on all kinds of levels. Um, the, we were fortunate to, for this film to travel um, throughout the world, uh, more than 40 festi uh, animation festivals it was shown. So we see it behind okay. you, I think, the, right? Yeah. We, These are the we, different festivals that the film had. Yeah, we created for, for Miriam and the family uh, after a year. Uh, the, the film was created in 2019, and uh, a, it, a year came around just when COVID hit, um, and the festival, all the animation festivals stopped. Uh, so we, again, we were lucky to have, to have the world see it, and we have photos come in from, eight, from, from, from China, from Europe, from, from South America, from the U.S., of people sitting and watching this film that have nothing to do uh, with Israeli remembrance, 
um, with, with, the Lebanon, with the first Lebanon war, but has to do with parents and child and losing and memory and how we commemorate and how we deal with loss. Miriam, is there something that you want to share with us about your feelings when you're watching this film? אני אדבר בעברית ואת תגידי באנגלית. הסרט נקרא Lost and Found, ובעצם Lost and Found זה nouns, ובסרט הם הפכו את זה לפועל, לוורב. מרים אומרת איך הוא של Lost and Found In English, it's a noun, and in, uh, in the film, it was, it was transferred to being a verb. Shifted. No, no, Miriam, it's very important to be very precise with the words. No, 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 I'm definitely not. I think that it's the power of the words. The words and the image, they have the power of the words from the whole. ומעט מילים בדרך כלל, הרבה מילים תמיד זה צרה גדולה, אבל מעט מילים ותמונה טובה, יש בזה הרבה כוח. ואני רוצה להגיד שאחת... אני רק אתרגם את זה. The power of few words and a good picture, that is the, that's the power of this film, and I think overall, right, you've been, you've been saying that um, throughout all of our, our conversations, few words, precise words, um, and more silence. רק הנכדה, אחת הנכדות אמרה, סבתא זה סרט מאוד חכם, ואני חושבת שזה good definition. It's a smart film. And that's said by your granddaughter. תודה, מרים. From Miriam, we learned how difficult is the task of remembrance and how frightening is the possibility of forgetting. I want to quote Yehuda Michai, the poet, from his collection, Open, Closed, Open. The world is filled with remembering and forgetting, as it is with sea and dry land. Sometimes memory is the dry land that is firm and founded, and sometimes memory is the sea that covers everything, like in the flood. And it is forgetting that is the dry land like Ararat. I invite Miriam to share that tension and her choices made in that task of commemoration. Miriam, be vakasha. Tov. Tov. You have to remember that everything is heard. I have to be careful. Ever since Yuval was killed in the 1982 Lebanon war, one of the endless sources of pain has been the fact that I cannot remember his sound of his voice, the sound of his voice. I can remember the sound of his voice. The content of what he said a request, a joke, or discussions. These I remember well. Where and how he said them, by the front door, early in the morning before going out to his base, or the simple words exchanged between us that later became the last words I heard from him. The memory of them has not faded even a bit. In certain cases, I can even remember what he was wearing in a particular conversation. But the sound of Yuval's voice, not at all. This is awful. And despite a great effort, no matter what I try to do, no part of his voice, not a sound, comes back to me. And one thing more, there are a few items that have a prominent presence in our home. 
that are constant reminders that shout out, Yuvali was killed and we are without him in our home. His photos, his bed, his wonderful collection of records that are still played at full volume on the record player, and his violin. But the violin is different. It was only Yuval's. For 10 years of his life, throughout his childhood and teenage years, only his hand held it. Only he tuned it. He was attentive to it, rested his cheek on it, and only he played it. And when he played, the music was the sound of them both, Yuval and the violin. The violin, like all of us, was left orphaned. And just as the string of Yuval's soul died, so did the string of the violin. They became loose and frail. In time, I couldn't bear to see the violin so damaged, and I decided to have it repaired. I began a journey that started at home and continued to the city of Cremona, Italy, well known for their violins. An exhausting journey of both hope and great fear. The violin came home repaired, but I still had no way of hearing its sound. At last, Hamutal, a good friend of the family, she's sitting here, suggested that her son Omer, a violinist, would play the violin so we could finally hear its sound. I went to their home feeling tense. Omer first played a brief piece on his own violin. And then he took up Yuvali's violin, tuned it again and again, and he played. This was a true moment of chesed. What depth and softness in the sound of the violin. With great excitement, I also felt peaceful calmness. The sound of this violin is the closest that illustrates Yuval's character and personality. So now you have the story, and today Omer will play Yuval's violin in your honor, in our honor, in honor of Yuval. And I will go back for a moment to what I said at the beginning, to say now loud and clear, loud and clear, Yuvali, your voice is heard today. Today your voice is heard, Yuvali. Omer, invite Omer Herz and Tom Zalmanov to play us Mozart's Sonata. Hello, um, I'm very honored to be here and to play on Yuval's violin. My name is uh, Omer Hertz, um, and I'm also uh, very happy to play with the pianist Tom Zalmanov, um, and happy to, to be a great friend with uh, Miriam, 
and for this opportunity. Omer and Tom, thank you. I would like to invite you, our guests, if you have any questions or thoughts or comments that you would like to share with us, we will we'll collect a few. You have it with the microphone. 
anyone wants to say anything. To Miriam, to Dov. First, I want to say thank you, Miriam, for um, allowing your story, to, your son's story, to be told. Um, when the first time the colors change, when the dad realizes that his son is not with him, I whispered, I know that feeling. Because I remember the first time my son decided to take off when I was at a mall and all of a sudden couldn't find him. Um, and anyway, I just felt like it, that the emotional changes throughout were very um, honest. Great, thank you. So I would like to return to Yudam Michai once again. And who will remember, says Yudam Michai, and by what means do we preserve memory? How do we preserve anything in the world? We preserve it with salt and sugar, high heat and deep freeze, with vacuum seal, with drying and embalming. But the best way of preserving memory is to protect it within forgetting, so that even a single recollection will be unable to penetrate and disturb the eternal rest of memory. I want to say that Miriam, you taught us that you preserve memory also with endless devotion, with love and persistence, and making the voice and the sounds alive. I want to thank you for your generosity and honesty in which you shared this story with all of us, and you've shared it with me over the past month. I want to thank Dov for the intelligent way in which you told us, shared this story with all of us and with the world and the creators of the film. I want to thank Omer for awakening Yuval's violin and bringing it to life, and for Tom for accompanying him on the piano, to our partners at JFNA, to all of Beta Vichai's staff from the leaders of this unique project, to everyone that enables all this to happen, to the tech team accompanying us here today, making this possible, production, Chagai, thank you for, for the production, and Yochevet, um, all the behind the scene people. So thank you so much to all of you. And to all of you for your listening, you are now partners and carriers of this memory with all of us. We will end with the sounds of the violin with Tchaikovsky Melody. I want to thank you all, and I want to wish you a good and meaningful day and a good visit here in Israel. May you come back to visit us here at Beta Vichai. Omer Vivakasha. I'm not so brave as it sounds here, and it's not so easy as it sounds here. To remember is a very, very, very hard work. It takes everything from you. But I couldn't stand the thought that I was a child in the Harrell's family. He was 19 and 8 months. And there is no, that's not in not going to happen in the Harrell's family. Yuval is staying with us every day. In Hebrew we say, I, I don't think there is a kind of combination in English, but in Hebrew, in active way, in active uh, word, we say zocher, remember. But there is uh, another form said Nizkar, it means kind of a passive voice. I cannot allow Yuval to be on the passive voice, that somebody will remember him from time to time. 
Val has to be remembered every day, all day. He deserved it. He was a very, very good child at home and a very good person. And thank you for listening to that. Omer, bevakasha. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. You're welcome.